Then we had abusive boyfriends, crazy uncles. Everybody knew everybody's business. Everybody knew why they was in there, all of that. So I was just like, bro, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, I, don't, I really wanted to go, but I knew I couldn't turn back at this point. My baby was crying. He wouldn't stop crying. I was just rocking him. Mm -hmm. I just remember in my mind just picturing myself, shooting myself. That night ended up with an officer telling me that if I decide to up and leave the hospital, that he would issue a mental health warrant out for my arrest. Thank you so much for watching Missing Julie TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything I mean like story time. <laughs> story time, story time, of course, of course. As you can see by the title, um, this story time is going to be about the time that I unfortunately had to place a restraining order on my mom. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below because after this video y'all, this next video after that is going to be like probably one of my hardest videos and I, pr I feel like I'll be saying this in damn it all of my videos up oh, my hardest video my hardest video but no like dead ass it, this moment honestly was the hardest moment I've ever dealt with in my 25 years of living last video was titled my mom was prostituting um or I caught my mom prostituting can't remember I was reconciling with my mom and that got canceled whenever she had another episode um, and whenever I say episode, I mean that's when she was lashing out again, saying crazy things to family members. And I didn't like that. Like, I understand it wasn't directed towards me um, at that time, but I didn't like that because I feel like as a family, we all care about my mom and we all want, want to help her. She can't expect me to just be the only one helping her out here. Like, she has to be... Like we all gotta do this and you we can't all do this if you are on good terms with me just because you don't have nobody or just because i'm the only child that you've had you want to make sure that we're good but not everybody else like i didn't like that so um after i sent her that last message that long message that y'all saw in the last video uh, she decided to threaten me <laughs> and so i'm not gonna go back to the text messages right now because I don't feel like digging through my phone. I'll do that once I begin editing my video. Um, but I'll just go ahead and post the text that I am referring to. Now these particular text messages, I was like, wait, now it's becoming personal because you're threatening my home, you're, you're threatening my vehicles, the livelihood of my child. My mom has said some hurtful things to me. We, you know, we've gone through some stuff, but that right there was the most hurtful thing that she's ever said to me. Um, and now looking back at it, I understand she was mentally ill. Um, but still, it's still hurtful. It's still the most hurtful thing she has said to me, even though I'm not like, I'm not dwelling on anything to this day, but just looking back at it, I'm just reflecting, right? So yeah, reflecting back at it, that was just horrible. And so, um, I decided, I said, you know what? I told my husband, well, my boyfriend at the time, we weren't married yet, but I told Gabe, I'm like, look, I'm about to call the police. Like, I'm, I'm not about to do this. Like, I need to figure out a way to stop her because I don't know what she's capable of at this point like she's telling she's gonna shoot us up like she's never done these things before and it just seems like every single time she has these episodes they become worse and worse I'd rather be too cautious than to not be if you get what I'm saying so I called the cops and the crazy part about it is this officer is now um, deceased if you live in Houston you know I'll post a picture of him this is the officer who came um, to my house to assist he was shot um, in Houston, um, it was last year and it was like a, a big thing. So if y'all from Houston or live in Houston, y'all know, y'all probably know who this is, but that's the officer. He took the report and stuff like that and told us the same thing. Like 
because we were trying to look into some like mental health warrants but we weren't able to do that for whatever reason i forgot what the stipulations were but it was just too much or un or impossible one of the two i can't remember but we couldn't do it but he did recommend a restraining order for my safety and for my children's safety um because he did know i was pregnant and i've been going through this back and forth with my mom and i've also we've had a physical altercation before and so i would have hated for something like that to have happened at that time if not worse so he recommended me to file a restraining order if y'all have been following these story times y'all know in the beginning uh, whenever my mom and i fought i went to the um downtown the building where you get restraining orders i don't know what the name of the building is but i went there and they couldn't do anything because my mama didn't have a physical address for them to serve her papers so whenever he told me that i'm like okay i'm gonna just go i'm gonna just at least try to do it i know they're not gonna really be able to do anything because i don't have a physical address on her but i do know that she eventually is going to be arrested at some point and you know it is what it is i'm just gonna have to take that that chance and just hope that this would go through the way that i'm hoping it will this was probably like a, a, a week before i gave birth i was so stressed y'all so stressed i didn't file the restraining order right away because i was so close to my my due date i didn't want to like go through all of that at the time i was like i'm just wait so that's what i did i waited um i had the baby usually my mom would be in the delivery room um, but that was the first birth that my mom was not in the delivery room my mom was there for my first child and my mom was there for my second child but she wasn't there for my third um which was different it was you know it was it sucked i ain't gonna lie but uh, my grandma was there to support so my grandma and my uh, husband or my boyfriend at the time but he's my husband now i gotta i gotta make sure i say that like i don't know i just feel the need to just say that but y'all know what i mean it was cool my mama wasn't there but i was just i was just trying not to think about the fact that all of this shit had already happened after i had my baby i knew still in my heart i knew i still wanted to file a restraining order because i wanted to protect my kids like i wasn't worried about myself i was worried about my children summer had already started but prior to my daughter would ride the bus and stuff and my mom would know that like she know her bus number and all of that and i didn't want her to like try to take her or try to come up to her i don't know i didn't i was just thinking like the worst so i just knew i had to protect my children so um my grandma offered to come with me to file the restraining order we went downtown it was a lot different it was a lot smoother it was a, a little wait still but it wasn't as near as the last time whenever i was going to file the restraining order back way back in 2016. i went in the little office where they ask you questions like why you want to file and all of this type of stuff i didn't give them every single detail from top to bottom but i just gave them the important ones like such as like the fight that we had um and just different situations that would kind of show them her behavior and how you know how it can be difficult to deal with as i was explaining to them the situation i really like i just felt so empty and inside because i'm just thinking to myself like i'm really about to fucking file a restraining order on my mom dude like not a boyfriend not a crazy boyfriend not ghosts you know because ghost was a crazy motherfucker you would have thought i would have had to do that with him but I have to do that with my mom, like my whole mama. Like I came out of her vagina. <laughs> Shit is crazy still to this day. But I really, really felt bad. And my grandma was there and I didn't let her see it because I, I didn't want like, and I'm still kind of like this. Like I don't like to express my feelings to certain people, like unless either my husband or my best friend. Um, but I, I typically hold those emotions in. I did not want to do that, but I felt like I had to. That's all I was worried about was protecting my kids protecting my family that's it and i forgot to mention i don't know why i didn't mention this before but my mom ended up getting arrested not for me calling the cops on her she got into altercation with someone at denny's and so they arrested her and so yeah that was why she was arrested but um and the, the way i found that out is because i would always like check online like maybe every other day whenever i didn't hear from my mom i would always check online to see and it's sad that i even have to do this but i would faithfully search her name on the Harris County or the, the Harris County is Houston Police Department. That's the name of them. So I would always check their website to see if she's been booked. And I would always not see her like search, not found, search, not found. And then one time I saw it, 
her name popped up she had been arrested and the charge like retaliation or something like that or terroristic threat some shit i don't know i knew the jail she was at so i gave them the jail address and so that's how they were able to ser serve her they served her and once they served her now they had to you know establish a court date and everything i got a letter in the mail saying that she had been served and also um, giving me my court date now my court date was the the next month like the following month from whenever i initially filed that whole situation was scary i never imagined myself actually doing that like i could just remember myself in my car listening to music like crying because I'm just like I'm really doing this but I can't take this back I can't I can't because I why I have to protect my family I have to do what's best and maybe it's not going to be something that'll be forever but right now I have to do it and that's what I was thinking and so um I've never done this before either like I've never been into in court or anything like that so it was different i went downtown to the place and i really thought my mom was going to be there that's the whole thing in my mind like fuck i'm just gonna have to face her because you know obviously i have to since she's the person that i'm following the restraining order against but luckily um that wasn't the case since she was in jail um but for other people it wasn't so so they wasn't so lucky um and i say that because the way that they had everything set up was everyone who was following a restraining order on that day had to go in this large courtroom they had the officer there just explaining to you giving you your rules telling you what to do and not to do and all this type of shit y'all know well y'all might not know but that's how it was and so it was like a legit courtroom like the judge stand the jury like all of that obviously they didn't have no jury or anything because it wasn't a trial but it was in the courtroom where they would normally hold a trial if that makes sense i didn't know what i was going to expect i thought it was going to be something private since filing a restraining order isn't something that's like the easiest thing to talk about i assume that it would have been like in a private room but boy was i wrong <laughs> they were calling everybody's name one by one they called the person who is filing the restraining order and then they're called the other person who is getting the restraining order filed on if i said that right y'all know what i mean whenever i saw they were calling them up and they were they were coming up going to the front of the courtroom and sitting in front of the judge i was just, and some of them had lawyers some of them didn't i was just like bro like i gotta fucking go <laughs> i'm socially awkward at times i don't really like a large crowd i don't and, and i know it's weird to say this because i'm a youtuber right i know but like i don't really like to talk in front of a lot of people yet alone talk about something so sensitive like that wasn't no any type of situation to talk about and so and it's just crazy because i was there for a while y'all just listening to everybody cases the judge was asking what happened they had abusive boyfriend crazy uncles had a lot of crazy situations and i was listening to this like not only just me but every everybody that was in there was listening to the whole situation everybody knew everybody's business everybody knew why they was in there all of that so i was just like bro i can't believe i'm doing this like i don't i really wanted to go but i knew i couldn't turn back at this point i was already there like i couldn't do anything else like i could not show up i mean i could have but i just knew i couldn't it was something i needed to do for my mental and my safety period so the time finally came and my name was fucking called I go up there, the judge, she was a black lady. She asked me specifically what their relationship to that person. Y'all, I got a whole audience behind me. I did not want to say my mom. That was so embarrassing. It was humiliating. It was hurtful. My mom was like, I don't have a, no other parent, living parent, I should say, but her. And I'm about to place a two year restraining order on her. I can't talk to her. I can't see her. I can't write her. I can't breathe her air. I can't do anything for two whole years. Yeah, I know she hurt me. My mom had issues though. And the fact that I was pregnant and I was already dealing with depression for the first time that ultimately ended up getting worse, which we're gonna get there eventually. I'm dealing with all of these things and I knew I had to do it. I knew I had to. I explained to the judge everything and she was like, your mom? I'm like, yes ma'am. Like, have you guys tried to seek help for her? And I said, yeah, but every time we've tried to help, like the police would say either, 
we can't help and i know y'all like why y'all always gotta get the police involved because like we don't fucking know what else to do like she's a grown woman we can't hold her down that's illegal why not get legal expert or somebody to help us help her you know but that wasn't working unfortunately and obviously i explained that to the judge and she was just like i'm very very sorry you know i hope everything gets better um and stuff and like thank you i wanted to cry so bad i really did but i didn't i held it together i cried afterwards obviously whenever i got in the car but um i held it together there and um because my mom wasn't there they filed a default judgment anyway um like she could have came but she didn't she didn't try to fight it um she she didn't try to fight it she was in jail anyway but they would have brought her down because the, the jail that she was at was in the same area so they would have brought her down to the courtroom if she wanted to fight it but i felt like she knew that like she messed up i was really really hurt that day keep in mind i just had a baby i'm battling with these postpartum emotions and family shit and all of this was just a lot and i just noticed like I stopped eating y'all I did not want to eat I barely slept but I was always tired but I was always up like my mind was just like wandering wandering I would, I would do a lot of crying and I was also breastfeeding my son exclusively at that time and that was another hard thing because he would not y'all he would not take a bottle and so he needed me so much I couldn't detach myself from him because I knew he needed to eat I could feel myself going into this deep deep depression that i've never ever ever felt myself going to ever in my life y'all know like i've been through breakups where i thought i've been depressed but and i've said like oh yeah i was so depressed after that breakup y'all i that that was nothing compared to what i experienced like that was what i experienced right in the moment that i'm speaking of right now that was real depression i went to my ob about i was really close with my gynecologist um she hadn't been on me since i was 16 she delivered my first baby at the age of 16 so uh, i was really comfortable with her and i had already been on medication prior to in my third trimester um for depression but i thought it had went away i don't know why i thought it went away but i just stopped taking the medicine and i was okay up until three months later i started to get really really overwhelmed I found myself on edge all the time with everybody snappy with my kids snappy with my husband you know i worked in customer service too y'all that definitely didn't make it any better i hated myself at that time because i hated feeling like that and i didn't understand why i felt like that i can remember not wanting to be bothered with my baby i can remember him just crying and i'm just like i just wish he stopped crying i just wish he stopped crying i used to cry with him because i felt like i couldn't do anything like sometimes my milk wouldn't come out if you've breastfed before you know like all that feeds off of environment whenever i say that i mean like i notice whenever i'm like mad or upset my milk would take so long mm -hmm. to express Versus when I'm calm, when I'm chill and relaxed, it would come out like within a couple of seconds. My milk supply becoming low because I'm not feeding as often as I should. And I'm trying to supplement with bottles that he's barely even taken. Like he'll drink some of it and then start crying because he doesn't want to, he didn't want a bottle. He was a titty baby, like literally a titty baby. With Santiago, I breastfed him for 19 months straight. I had no problems, no issues, no nothing. So I thought that it was okay, all good for me to do it this time too. But nope, nope, nope. I was wrong once again. I made an appointment with my doctor and explained to her how I felt. Um, she asked me the normal questions, like if I felt like calming myself, anything like that. Um, I told her no. And I don't know if it was a lie or I don't I don't know. And I said I don't know if it's a lie or not because I don't know if what I'm gonna say right now is considered uh, suicidal thoughts or not. But and I'm pretty sure it is. But I can remember vividly my baby was crying. He wouldn't stop crying. I was just rocking him, you know, trying to hold him, trying to help him, soothe him, whatever, something. And I just remember in my mind just pitching myself, shooting myself like in the head with a gun i don't know i don't know why to this day i can picture that in my mind i can put myself in that same place just for a split second and i can imagine exactly what i was imagining at that time and i was imagining just shooting myself i just i don't know i just felt so overwhelmed i just felt so uh i just hated everything i didn't 
I just hated everything, hated life. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't completely neglect him, but it was more so of, I'm gonna feed you, I'm gonna change you, and I'm done with you. Like, I don't wanna deal with you no more. Like, I know I gotta feed you, I know I gotta change you, but after that, like, I'm not, I don't wanna do anything. I don't wanna hold you, I don't wanna play with you. I don't wanna sing you songs. I don't wanna do anything. I just wanna do what I need to do and get rid of you. And whenever I mean get rid of you, I mean, like, pass the baby on to his dad. And so, I explained all this to my doctor, and so, she asked me questions, and she was like, seems as though you're going through some type of postpartum depression. Well, I don't think she said some type of, but she said, postpartum depression for sure i've never dealt with that before so she explained to me that it's normal um to happen to women and that you know everything will be okay but she told me she wanted me to she was a little bit concerned because at that time i i weigh at that appointment i weighed 92 or 93 pounds one of the two it was definitely it wasn't over 95 for sure but um it was in the early 90s and i remember her saying i want you to go get checked up and, and make sure there are any underlining conditions or anything that could be causing you to not want to eat or anything like that i think it was a setup and i'll tell y'all why it was a setup after a while or y'all figure out why i feel like it was a setup but she was telling me that she's like i want you to go get checked out but i want you to go get checked out at this specific hospital it wasn't a regular hospital like that you go to if you know you in pain or you sick or something it was a mental hospital which i've never ever ever heard of that mental hospital and it's crazy that i've never heard of it before because i used to live right around the corner like whenever i was 18 i used to live in a particular area it was in ghetto by the way uh but <laughs> it was i used to live around there and it was the hospital that i'm talking about was right around the corner far as fuck from my house by the way but far it was far as fuck from the house that i was currently living in um but she said that's where she wanted me to go and she was like you could just go go there you know you'll be home later on you know within a couple of hours but i just want to know that you are okay and um maybe they can help you a little bit more than i can because i'm i'm your i'm only your ob and i can only do so much you know um, she was only able to prescribe one depression medication and that was it Not everything anything else above that if anybody needed further help in that field or in that area she would have to refer you elsewhere and so that's why she referred me to the hospital i was all over the place i was crying and everything and at this time i became close with the nurses and the assistants and stuff and so they were in there and talking to me and telling me their experiences and how they went through it before and this and that and so my doctor was concerned she wanted to make sure that i got home safely so she it was at the end of the day anyway they were already about to clock out she was like can you wait a little while um a couple of minutes while we you know close up everything um because i would like for them to ride with you home so that i can make sure you make it there safe and i'm like okay cool so i text gabe and told him i'm like yeah she wants me to go into this hospital tonight um for a couple of hours just for an evaluation i'll be home um one of the nurses are gonna ride with me so um it was two nurses one of the nurses rode with me in my car because i obviously had to drive myself there but then the other nurse followed me to my house that way she, the other girl could hop in the car with her once i made it home so i made it home um and it was like promise us you're gonna go just go there get evaluated just make sure everything is okay like everything's gonna be okay i promise don't be afraid because i wasn't a little afraid because i didn't know what to expect but i honestly just thought it was just like a like a clinic or something like even though she said it was a hospital but i'm just picturing in my mind like a small little thing for like mental patients who need medicine or assistance or something i don't know i was just stupid i was so stupid i should have did my research on this place before i went because i promise you if i would have done my research i wouldn't have went i wouldn't have i wouldn't have and the reason why i wouldn't have went is because i'm just say this that night ended up with an officer telling me that if i decide to up and leave the hospital that he would issue a mental health warrant out for my arrest and the shit that i dealt with while in there boy i get chills thinking about this situation it was like jail it was horrible it was scary you guys and i'm just rambling on because i really really shouldn't be rambling on about it because i feel like i'm already giving too much away because i'm gonna stop right here but we'll get into that in the next video you guys we're just getting warmed up i know it's taking me forever to you know do this story time series so that being said thank you guys so much for watching um if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button down below turn on your post notifications because you don't want to miss my next video you don't want to miss what i have to say next you don't want to miss what happens next like 
yo my life is full of surprises and this next one is gonna be one of them okay i hope to see you in my next video bye